sister, what have you done? Hey, little sister, who's the only one? Nobody at, at this stage or at this level is trying to make churches marry gay people. Right? And they shouldn't. It's a, it's a, it's a, that's, a, that's a church state separation yes. issue. Churches can marry whoever the heck they want. But what's going to happen in practice is people are going to say, oh, I belong to this church, I'm gay, I want to get married, will you marry me? And that's, that's kind of where we're going with this at the punchline is what's going to happen then. And that's, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. But that's not, that's not the state mandating the church. That's, that's somebody who goes to that church asking. Right, so that's a completely well, different issue. Nobody, if you don't want to have a gay marriage, don't, don't have a gay marriage. Most right? of these things are, are business practices. I hate to break it to all of you out here who don't understand it, but churches are, in fact, businesses. Uh, they're they're nonprofit protected businesses um, that stockpile money and property. Um, in this case, what are they afraid of? Well, if we're the local big shot church and we don't allow gay marriage and there's a significant gay population in our area who'd like to and some other church comes up and says hey you know we're all here about the love of Jesus and we don't care whether you want to get married to somebody of the same sex all of a sudden you start losing some of your profits to this other church and it changes uh, the paradigm of what becomes acceptable yeah with regard yeah. to religion yeah. I think the, the same thing is, is kind of true the reason they're finding this is they're afraid of losing their income. And I think this is one of the reasons why we had blue laws. Um, hey, I don't want to work on my Sabbath. This other guy who's a heathen who's willing to work on my Sabbath has a better chance to draw more income because he's doing more. Um, so let's, let's ban that so that I can have my day off and force him not to engage compete, in capitalism right. and compete. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of patent, patently obvious right there what's going on. And I would say that I'm, I'm a proponent of you work harder, you earn more. And if I'm willing to work and open my store seven days a week and you're not because you believe in some invisible man in the sky who will strike you down if you do, sucks to be you. Yeah, you should have more business because yeah, you're you willing to do more work. Yeah. yeah. How hard is that? Well, I guess people need to realize, too, that capitalism is our, is our national <laughs> religion. Yeah, that's it's American. Not, it's not uh, Christianity. Anyway, so I'd like to point out some of the hysterics that, that have come up. I mean, people, people are just, like, up in arms about this, this gay rights thing, which is, I find amusing. So uh, I just want to hit some of these. Uh, so the, uh, let's see, uh, the director of the Capital Resource Institute says, this is a very sad day for our nation and the democratic process. And she goes on to say, four arrogant elitist activist judges decided that they know better than the people how, to, how marriage should be defined. So here there, she's referring to the fact that there was a, a popular vote within California about defining marriage and restricting marriage to, to a, a certain you know, minority or whatever. But you have a situation where you have a bunch of people going to vote on the rights of the mi minority. Right. And you know, this, is, this is not how our country works, right? We protect the minorities. And if the minorities have certain rights as given by the Constitution or the state Constitution or the national Constitution, that takes precedence. And that's just how, that's, that's America. Yeah, this, right? this statement is, could only be made by somebody who ignorantly believes that we live in a simple majority rules society. That is simply not true. We, we live, first of all, in a representative republic. Um, we do get to vote. Your vote matters, and I encourage people to vote. But it doesn't matter what the majority votes for if it violates the Constitution and the principles that the nation was founded on. The Constitution exists to protect minorities from the whim of the majority. That's right. You couldn't, you couldn't all get together as a majority and say, we've decided that atheists should be slaves. Uh, what, what? As appealing as that might be to some people. Um, <laughs> and, and likewise, you should not be allowed to get together to vote that somebody else cannot marry somebody else just because you object to it or because your invisible friend objects to it. That's insane. They have rights and freedoms too. And just because you have the numbers does not make you right. Yep. Yep. That's right. That's right. And so, and we had that same sort of thing here in, in Texas where we had right. uh, a, a majority vote based on, um, based on the rights of minority. Now, 
you know, if Christians really believe they're in, in Jesus and, the, and they do unto others, then what about having gays, majority of gays, vote on whether Christians can get married? Mm. Wouldn't, that be, wouldn't that be appropriate? And, and because of the exact same reason that you just gave, we can't have that. We can't have a minority or we can't have a majority vote on the rights of others. That's just, that's just not how it works. So... We have all sorts of quotes related to this. You know, it's a blow to our government system that activist judges would use the judicial system and baseless constitutional arguments, not true, to push their radical political agenda on citizens. Radical political agenda. Boy, Equality you guys so many buzzwords in your, your outrage. It's, yeah. it's hilarious. Activist judges, radical movements. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's radical. Uh, it is kind of radical in, sense, in the same sense that it was radical to get rid of slavery. Okay, so here uh, Tony Perkins from the Family Research Council says, it's outrageous that the court has o overturned not only the historic definition of marriage, but the clear will of the people of California as expressed in Proposition 22. Uh, more that. nonsense of the will of the people. Hey, here's a tip. If you don't want to marry somebody of the same sex, don't. Right. Pretty easy. Right, so it's not being foisted on anyone. Here's something from protectmarriage.com, which is a conservative thing. They say, oh, well, you've got to have, this is from the top ten talking points about same-sex marriage. The first one has to do with collective wisdom. And they say, for, for Christians, the Bible is, the unequivocal, is unequivocal on the subject, one, one man, one woman for life. Hey, here's a tip. Your Bible is not the authority on what constitutes legal marriage, which is why non-Christians are allowed to marry in this country. Um, as long as non-Christians are allowed to marry, you don't get to cite the Bible as the authority on marriage. As long as our Constitution is not paying deference to any particular religion, you don't get to use any of them. We have laws. Right. Marriage is a legal contract between two people. We have supposedly this idea of equality and freedom and rights that are being denied individuals out of ignorance and prejudice. That, we're trying to correct the situation here. Right. So there's another argument that kind of relates to this, and that is there's a slippery slope that it, supposedly establishing same-sex marriage as a fundamental right will undermine current polygamy laws and create a new legal precedent for anything goes forms yes. of marriage. Well, you know, when you put this Bible thing together and polygamy laws, laws, it's like you better get your story straight because if you go reading the Bible, you know, marriage was yeah, like, like one was man and however standard. many women you could yeah. you could get your hands on and concubines too. How many wives did David have again? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me the Bible's against polygamy. And furthermore, traditional marriage tradition is is a man owns the woman. She's property, right? And that's not so so what they're arguing for based on tradition and slippery slope arguments and polygamy all, is is just complete nonsense, right? They, it's yeah. like they haven't even cracked their Bible. Is which is amazing to me. If we let those homos marry people be marrying animals and have four wives, look, Dogs I'm going to marry cats Muhammad. Together. <laughs> right. Love you, Muhammad. Right. But this is pretty hysterical. So, th so there's a woman by the name of uh, Sally Kern, who's an Oklahoma lawmaker, who said that homosexuality poses a bigger threat to the U.S. than terrorism. So, uh, so that's that's just how? Too, too funny. It's how. And she claims. What she's are a you guys doing? <laughs> yeah. Why is not why isn't Osama recruiting gays? Yeah. I mean if that's the big threat. What's yeah. the big threat that so you know you'll, you'll have nicer clothes and yeah. So we'll come back to her in a minute. So I I think these are all pretty hysterical, right? Sister,